Hi guys, this is Tinroll. Welcome to KSP Science Exploration Adventure Episode 6. Here I am in Strategia looking at the strategies that I have. I noticed that IOTA is grayed out because I must have not performed a crude flyby of IOTA. So by sending my Kerbals around to get science earlier, I actually prevented myself from being able to pick this up. So I won't be making that mistake again. But after landing on IOTA with my probe, I uh, collected a bunch of science and I'll show you what I got pretty quick. So I unlocked Engineering 101 so that I could get a whole bunch of new science parts. Universal Storage has a uh, certain... These are meant to be radially attached in uh, some kind of uh, structure that you can have to connect them to. I haven't used it yet. I might when I unlock more Universal Storage parts. But for now, high gain antennas. The multispectral scanner is going to let me scan biomes. I'll also have antennas for more distance so I can get further away from Gale with my ships and still be able to transmit to them. This SAP SEP Central Station uh, surface experiment pack or something like that. This is for the surface experiments um, such as this little surface magnetometer that you can uh, put out. So that lets you uh, connect power to it and connect your experiments together and then you can calibrate them with the scientist. I'll be doing that when I get more Kerbals on the ground. Advanced electrics, you guys knew I was going for this mainly because of these solar panels that can swivel around in two directions. So they always face the sun when possible. More batteries and these uh, power extending parts. I also improved my rocketry for my 1.25 meter engines, or tanks and engines, different options for that. Micro rocketry gives me this really efficient tiny engine, as well as a radial reaction wheel, which is the only reaction wheel I've found yet. And then solid rockets. Right now these solid rockets don't offer much, but I've been using liquid engines right now, which have engines on them that are pretty heavy. These are all-in-ones. It's just a stack that you can't throttle or turn off once you start it. And so they're pretty efficient for the very last stage when you're launching uh, from the surface of the planet. So I also have a craft that I want to go launch. Okay, before I launch, I have to consider this similar to how I launched toward the poles. This isn't equatorial or polar. It's going to be about more of a 50 degree angle or so but also so that I'm that's just uh, one axis uh, clockwise counterclockwise another one I have to consider is uh, around the planet if I launched now my orbit would be skewed and I'd have to rotate it vertically around in order to match a so what I'm going to do is launch underneath the orbital path of these guys. So I'm going to fast forward until my ship is under their path so that I'll be in a very similar plane so that I can arrange an encounter with them. And then I'm going to be aiming down here toward the 45 degree on my nav ball and the north, somewhere in between there. I'm going to aim up a little higher than I normally would. I'm going to build up about 400 vertical speed before I start bringing it down because this is set up so that my final stage at the top is going to have to finish the orbit because I didn't want to have, uh, I didn't want to carry the central column into space. And it's not so aerodynamic so I don't want to release the uh, fairing until I get higher. How is this looking? Okay, a little more toward the 45. So I could have designed this a little bit differently. I should have had the decoupler, maybe another decoupler. 
does in that. I'm in space and I can safely deploy my chutes, which I've tied to gear. And this can rotate around clockwise and swivel around like that. So I shouldn't have so many dead spots for solar panels now. That'll be nice. All right, and I uh, have some new experiments. So I can send that information home. Apparently I can get a crew report without having someone in there. That's interesting. We are now halfway to anywhere. I'll transmit that for two and a half science. Material bay. Ooh, inoperable after transmitting. I forgot about that. Twelve and a half science. The bay malfunctions and shatters a glass. Its contents float out everywhere and begin to glow. You make note to pack more of this material next time. I'll send that back. I might be able to restore it with Bob. He's only level 1 or 0. I don't actually remember what they start out as. But I also thought that I have an irradiance scanner. Only done from high orbit. So I'll be able to do that experiment when I arrange an encounter with these guys. My orbit is... Slightly offset from Valentina's. So now I am on an interior orbit relative to Valentina, so I'm going to be going much faster than her. To arrange an encounter, I'm going to want to set up a maneuver that gets me closer to Valentina in such a way that after a certain number of orbits or rotations will be similar in uh, location so I can aim just a little bit more to the one side or increase my speed to make it so my orbit crosses over and then at the closest point where I cross over I'll, I'll uh, change my relative speed to target and I'll zero that out and that will effectively shift my orbit to make it match Valentina's and then I can work on getting closer from there. You can see uh, if I expand out like this, Valentina will be here by the time I'm here, so that's pretty far out. But it'll be easier to arrange this encounter. Uh... I don't think I can... That was actually pretty close. I was going to just extend my orbit and then work on getting an encounter later but this is actually pretty close so can I uh, if I shift when I burn that's getting really close there okay so by extending my orbit and rotating it uh, radially out this way I'm able to get pretty close separation 26 kilometers let's see if I can dial that down looks like 1.3 is about the closest I can get from here and considering I was going to burn about 400 meters a second just to extend my orbit doing another 100 to get the actual encounter is good so I'll get ready to do that so the relative distance to my target right now is more than 3,000 meters a second. So when I get close to this crossover, I need to burn to zero that out, cancel all of the difference between us, and then it'll make my orbit swivel around so that it matches this green orbit instead of the blue one that I'm at now. So I'll be moving about the same speed and have the same orbit as Valentina. Better burn time is telling me this is going to be about a 25 second burn in about two and a half minutes. So I'm going to go find the retrograde marker for my target. Looks like prograde is at the bottom, so retro must be here at the top of the wall. I've got 2300 meters a second delta V to pick up Val and get to Bob. 
Since I've extended my orbit so much for Val, it should be a lot less fuel to get to Bob. 90 seconds. Do my irradiance good now. Oops. An accurate recording of this planet's reflected solar irradiance is collected. I'll transmit that back. I'm actually, uh, I was paying attention to the experiment instead of what I was actually doing, so I overshot by 25 meters a second. I want to zero that out and then aim. Stop spitting. And then aim back toward the target and push closer. We're about 600 meters away, so I think that if I zero this out, Valentina can probably actually fly to the craft from wherever she is. Let's see, here's Val. I'm going to say if she can see the craft, then she can fly to it. But that's not always easy to do. To catch it among all these stars. Oh, I think that's it right there. But I can't tell, so I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to burn about 20, maybe 30 meters a second toward her. And we'll, that's saying I'll collide with her in about 20 seconds, which is unfortunate because if I pick up speed to negate this, I'm not going to be able to stop rotating enough to accurately there, there it goes value can see her flying by okay 200 meters apart now flew by me Let's see if she can see the craft now yep you can see the uh, blue solar panels I'll hit R spacebar to reorient myself now EVA you really want to find a frame of reference so I'm gonna use the planet is to my right I'm gonna face this way and it's not like racing or anything like that. You want to pulse because you're changing your orbit. You're not constantly having to accelerate. So I'm going to pulse off to the side here and down. Because it looks like relative to where I am, that's where it is. I'm going to push forward a little. Push forward some more, down some more. And get ready to start canceling out those actions. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit more to the right, slow down. up just a little and then start pulsing backwards turn on my lights and go to that open door I'll hit B so that it knows I want to board already Now, uh, oh, she's a tourist. I can't disembark her to get a report. I'll have to make sure that I have Bob do a report before I pick him up. We didn't scan our gun. Crew report is high. I don't remember doing a high one, but I guess I must have. But we've got Valentina, Bob, set his target. Not too far away here, but I'll be picking up a lot of speed as I get towards my periapsis. Let's see if anything I do makes much sense. So if I move my maneuver node over here, I can arrange an encounter that gets 7.4 kilometers away. 
for only 57 meters a second of delta V. So that'll be a lot easier to dial in on and uh, less expensive on the fuel. So only 176 meters a second to get rid of. Distance. Sometimes better burn time shows me uh, when I should be burning for an encounter like this. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't know what dictates whether or not it does. I'm keeping an eye on my distance though uh, down here on the right side of the nap ball because I know that I'm going to get it about 10,000. It's going to be my closest. So I'm going to start burning now. Okay, I'll be getting closer by about 2 kilometers in 11 minutes. I want to be closer than that, so I'm going to burn toward Bob. Okay, less than 200 meters away. Let's see if... Yep, he's right over there. You can see his orange helmet. Which means that he should be able to clearly see me. Nice shadow profile out there. Hit R to turn on my RCS. Thank you, son. Now I can't see my graft. Oh, there it is. So I guess the plants behind me, I'm going to use that as my relative spot. Push toward this guy. I want to make sure I don't spend all my RCS fuel. Just strand it out here. Okay, I'll start burning down and back. There we go. I'll have him get an EV airport while he's out here. Okay, I must have done that when I sent them out initially, so it's not worth anything. B for board, and then he's in the top cabin. Test. Oh wait, Bob is my resident scientist. Let me see if he can... Restore... Bob is a scientist. He must be considered a uh, tourist right now. So, I've got my Kerbals. Now, one of the experiments that I have on my craft is a... And I don't know how to say this, right? Submersion, uh, submersible oceanography and bathymet bathymetry, bathymetry data, something like that. So I'm gonna want to land in the ocean. Oh, but I'm gonna be going around in the dark for a while. So I may not actually make it into the sunlight. Sorry guys. Oh, that's right, I can't control my probe in the atmosphere. I forgot about that restriction I set. Because of uh, plasma. I was wondering why I could, yeah. So my uh, probe, oh, I'm also going. At warp speed. Did I break my antenna? I guess it doesn't matter. I was going to uh, burn my engine to help slow down, but now that I'm in the atmosphere, I can't. Until probably this fireball goes away. Let's see, I'll turn on that, I guess. 
So you guys can kind of see something. Take my ship into the water. I can't get that science. Oh man. Why can't I rotate better? Curse you, buoyancy. But I'll click these guys. So I'm up to 23 science from zero. Parts back, crew, these guys are considered tourists. I think that I can fix that by doing some file editing. Okay, Valentina is back to being a pilot, Bob is back to being a scientist, and they're both level one. Okay guys, with Bob and Val safe, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.